It's very excited to be here and join you today. My name is Andy Ayim and I run an angel investing school. And we're going to be amongst friends today, actually, some people that I know very well. And we're going to be talking a lot more about the startup ecosystem. And each of these people have each had several years in different vices working across the startup ecosystem. So I know you're going to get a lot of value out of this conversation. Um, so firstly, I'd like to introduce Andy Davis to share a little bit about himself quickly and then pass it on to Keji Denamali. Um, thanks for the intro, Andy. I am MB. I've had um, the privilege of working and supporting black founders and investors for the last for the last five, six years in the London ecosystem and been in the ecosystem mm -hmm. myself for just over 10 years or so. And so now I'm co-founder of a group called 10x10, a group of black founders and investors, and set, in the process of setting up a fund, a 10x10 fund to invest in black founders, currently an angel investor with Atomico Venture Fund, and recently released a report called Black Report under 10x10, the first qualitative report on black founders in the UK. Thank you, Andy. And we're going to dive a lot in, uh, deeper into the Black Report in a second. Um, Keji, would you kindly like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, hey, Andy, thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Keji, and I'm head of network and brand at Connect Ventures. I connect to the Pan European Seed Stage Front fund um, and with thesis led backing awesome product founders um, i have the privilege at connect of thinking about how we add value to our portfolio companies and how we help our founders cross the journey from minimal viable product to product market fit um, and also all things brand there and in the wider ecosystem i love mentoring and advising with early stage uh, founders and operators from uh, black and ethnic minority backgrounds so that's me thank you Excellent, Keji. We're going to dive a lot deeper into the work that you do as well. And finally, but definitely not least, Amali, please introduce yourself. Hello, Andy. Lovely to be joining. And yes, uh, Amali Dialwis, I'm the Managing Director of Microsoft Startups here in the UK. Um, my background, not only obviously, you know, working with incredible companies and, and as Microsoft Startups, we generally focus on sort of a Series A, Series B stage companies. And it's really around how can we help companies to accelerate their tech, as well as obviously um, sell to customers and enterprise clients uh, as well. Um, but prior to joining Microsoft, I was actually the chief exec of a company called Code First Girls, uh, where we focused on supporting women into the tech industry and had the pleasure of also having about 50% of all of our students. So we've just gone through our um, 20,000 young women taught to code for free. Uh, 10,000 of those were coming from black and ethnic minority backgrounds. So, um, you know, huge amount of uh, sort of support as far as uh, supporting people from all different backgrounds just to be excellent in tech. Incredible. And and I think we should just take a step back before we start the questions to just recognize that, you know, it's been a challenging year, but what a privilege and honor it is to come together and actually celebrate and to celebrate black tech at a black tech festival. That is incredible in itself. Right. And I think when we each entered into this ecosystem, something like this didn't exist. It was called a meeting and there's probably about 10 of us at that meeting. So it's a real privilege and honor today to be a part of what has been an amazing three days of programming yesterday, today and tomorrow with the Black Tech Fest. So a big, big, big thank you to Carter and Tech and to the whole team and, and partners who have been behind putting something like this together because spaces that are safe like this really matter and allow us to really tell our narrative in our own voices. So without, with that, uh, I'm going to move to the first question for Marley. And um, we don't often hear much about talent and Black talent in this space. Um, in fact, there's a lack of black talent really in the startup ecosystem from UX designers to product managers or engineers, you know, and you know this first time through the work that you've done with, with um, your coding school prior to being at Microsoft. Why do you think that is in terms of us having such a lack of black representation in this space? Um, and what do you think we can do about it? And, and actually, I think, uh, really good question, Andy, and I think the way that you put it there, the, the black representation and I think the profiling, and I, I would push back slightly about there not being, um, you know, amazing black talent in tech. And literally, like I said, you know, with Code First Girls, we had 10,000 young women who went through, a large number of those were young black women who were wanting to work in the tech industry and have gone on to do some incredible stuff. So these people are there. 
Um, I, I think there is a, a job around convincing more to come into the pipeline. Um, and often, you know, it, it, it's really around awareness. You know, have you considered the tech industry? Do you think that you have the skills to get into this? Do you feel that, you know, you will be welcome uh, in this industry? Um, and I think, you know, it, it, it's, it's whether you're talking about, you know, young black professionals sort of thinking about the tech industry as a potential avenue for their career development. You know, if it's if it's something that they can't connect with, they will take their talents elsewhere. You know, so it's really around, I think, us in the tech industry to, I think, be profiling more about what the industry is about, to be welcoming, to be profiling the incredible talent we do have and to actually help them to see that this is a career for them. These are fast growing industries. They are well paid jobs um, and that they can thrive and be supported. To the second part of that, it's to make sure that we deliver on our promise, that when we do welcome them into the industry, that we do support them, that we do champion them, that we do, uh, you know, help them to, to make it into the senior ranks. And I think that's the other part, which is around just nurturing people into positions of power, positions of authority, um, so that they can also then set really great precedents for new talent coming into the pipeline as well. No, excellent. You know, it really spoke to me when he talks about like welcoming them and nurturing them across a pathway to leadership, you know, a pathway and not just thinking about just hiring and stopping our efforts at just hiring, but actually how to retain and nurture them across their career journey. And I want to go off script a little bit. I know it's just been one question so far and I'm going off script, but um, I actually want to turn to Keji because Keji, we've had numerous conversations about talent and nurturing talent. And a lot of the work you do is in nurturing the talent, which happens to be founders with your work um, at Connect Venture. Um, what do you think is the small things that we could all do to really help support and nurture the talent through the pipeline from some of the lessons you've learned over the years? It's a great question. And it's something I'm giving so much thought to because I'm so desperate to like, you know, figure out a way to make the change. But I think a key part is actively first, like start by asking them, like, you know, have you, have you got someone in your corner who's a mentor to you de facto or, or you know, like officially uh, that's helping you think about how you navigate the next steps in your career? I think that's, that's one, because it's assuming that people, some people just don't want to do it and other people don't know how to do it. So actually by asking such a simple question, it's a, it's an opener to be able to have that discussion. So I think that's putting the onus on the individual. But I think actually um, people in senior roles in companies, they should be wanting to be sponsors and advocates for people. Um, I, I was on a call the other night with the wonderful Hackle Tree crew, uh, Deborah from YSYS, and, and they were talking about this. And the conversation about sponsors came up and I was saying that I got my break in tech from a wonderful woman who took a chance on me to sponsor me. I had no tech experience, but she thought I had transferable skills. So it's just other people looking at you and actually like, taking a chance in that way, um, but encouraging it from the, the company, like saying, hey guys, if you sponsor your time to mentor someone or, or advocate for someone, we'll do something for you, we'll incentivize you in some way. If that, I, I don't know, different ways, we should be A-B testing experiments of how to do this. And, and those are just some of the crazy thoughts percolating. <laughs> No, thank you. And, and I agree with that. I think there's a lot of fear sometimes to commit into a path, but I love how you use the word experiments to say, actually, let's just try some things out. Like, let's just take small steps. It doesn't have to be as daunting as you think. Um, and now, Andy, over to you. I'm going to stay off script for a little bit. Um, and I know you very well, and you haven't had a traditional corporate job or a big break in a tech firm. Like you very much have been a founder for, I guess, the last 10 years, and you've nurtured a community of black founders in the work that you do. Um, what are some of the lessons that you've learned in really nurturing a safe space for black talent to really grow and thrive in the communities that you've built up? Oh, well, thanks for the question. I think it comes down to one thing, if it's nurturing the talent, if it's, um being able to produce a report, if it's being able to get in in companies early when it comes to investing, I think it all comes down to one thing, which is care. You just have to care and people know when you do. And I think that's the number one ingredient. I think it's really, really simple. I think um, not every conversation, interaction, engagement has to be transactional. Some things, are, some things are going to be transactional, someone's pitching for money, but then there's opportunity to build a relationship there. Like I had, um, pre tier two lockdown rules I had two founders come over, come over to my flat yesterday and we just spent a few hours just going through their business and just building and stuff and um and, and this happens all the time i think and i think one founder joked and said what i have to give it at the end i have to give you equity or something and i was like what i was like no i was like what well, why would i expect anything well, why would i do this for anything i'm i'm doing it because you need help doing it and i want to help right? and that's it i think um number one ingredient is care 
if anyone's wondering how to, I don't know the secret to success to building great communities or companies or um, producing anything of such really, but I think the one ingredient that will get you somewhere is care. And I think if you care enough, um, then the rest of the round will happen. Thank you, Andy. And I can test a be testament to saying that Andy does truly care. Um, and in working with him and alongside him at Backstage, I, I experienced that firsthand. Um, and we've got a question that's come in, okay? And everyone's open to answer this question, of course. It's quite an interesting one, um, says the moderator. Um, so do we think the lack of black talent in tech has something to do with our cultural background, e.g. parents desiring their children to be lawyers, doctors, accountants, or engineers? What can we do to change this the person actually said maybe one for Keji, who is the next lawyer. So maybe we'll start with you, Keji, and then I will open it up to Marley and Andy. I'll say I 100% agree with that. My, my parents are first generation immigrants living here. And yeah, in African culture, like you're either a lawyer, a doctor, a banker, or like, you know, a teacher or something. Um, and I think it's, it's an education piece because actually before I got into tech, I didn't understand it either. And to this day, my father's always like, you're a barrister, I don't understand. I'm like, I work in venture now. I don't understand how we're still having this discussion. Um, but I've spent time, he's an entrepreneur and I've spent time like, explaining to him how tech's different, how it's moving, how it's changing the world we're living in. And him connecting to that, it's helping him understand a bit more like, oh, actually this is a really viable profession for you to be in and there's there's longevity in it and you can actually grow something. In his mind, like tech sounded like flash in the pan, whereas a lawyer or a doctor, these are careers you build over time and that's basically his mentality. So I think it's definitely educating them and you know, like I pick stories that I know would be interesting to him. So then he's engaged with what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's a cultural thing for sure. I love the way that you made that bilateral. So actually the education is two ways. It's like, they want the best for you, but you also want to educate them as you go along this journey and you're going into a new space that they're less aware of. Um, so thank you. Um, I invite Andy and Amali to add to that if they have anything to add. Yeah, I mean, I, I think definitely there are cultural aspects um, and and I think generational aspects as well, uh, and not just talking to the black community, you know, thinking about the Asian community, but actually a, a personal sort of story through my partner. So my other half is um, his family, his father's from Togo in West Africa, his mother's from Germany. And he was actually, he was doing a law degree at King's. Uh, that's what he studied first. Gave that up to do computer science. Several years of very difficult relationships with his father around how he was abandoning law and not really understanding technology. And he now has a very successful career. He works at Vodafone. His dad's very proud of him. Um, so I, I think going to Keji's point, absolutely. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a learning journey and a teaching journey. And, you know, I think you know, hopefully with most families, you can come to that point where you can come to that understanding as they're learning as well, but it's not always easy. And I think sometimes it is up to, you know, if you're a young person who's going through that and your family is giving you grief with that to just, you know, say, you know, I, I know this is coming from a place of love. And, you know, my adage is always, you know, you can get bad advice from people who love you, but just kind of, you know, sticking with that and finding people who can support you through that, and, you know, help sometimes getting maybe people to support your parents as well. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Andy, maybe just a slightly different uh, take on that same question, because you've had some two brilliant answers. Um, what are some ways that people can switch careers and get started and get skilled up to get into tech? You know, so... Um, I, 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 I'll, I'll bless, bless whoever's in the background. I, I, will, I will lead you with um, some data, right? So I think from the Black Foot, what we saw was that 64% of parents, of the founders' parents, had a, had a university degree. Right. Um, and this is at a time when black people have always had obstacles in front of them, especially in this country. Um, but when I think the average university attendance rate was 14 percent. And that tells you quite a bit, actually. Um, and that's them being educated in the 70s, 80s and possibly the early 90s. Um, so for 64 percent to have university degrees, there is that maybe expectation that their children do go on and get um, degrees. Um, that's what we've seen 95 percent of the founders of degrees and still in tech. Specifically, I think um, STEM, we saw 31% of founders have a STEM degree. So actually, you're talking about, you're talking about um, somewhat developing tech, tech skills from a different career or a different um, academic background, 31%, right? So I, I, think, I think that's quite telling. I think if 69% don't have, don't have an, a technical academic background, you can still get into tech or startups per se. I think the best way to do that, I think the same with all things in life, you just take an interest. You take an interest, you dive a bit deep in, 
and um, you ask a lot of questions. You do a lot of reading and stuff nowadays. It's not like when, when, when we, when Miss Ross grew up, when we had to um, wait for things to appear and um, and go read certain news articles and wait for like another week for some other article to come out. <laughs> Those days are a bit gone, where everything is on everything is on the internet already, and um, the only things that are coming to the internet are things that that haven't had, that are yet to exist. So um, I think if you want to, you will, and it's just about diving deep, taking your own interest and proving those things out. As founders, a lot of a lot of um, parents and families won't understand what a startup is. So it's about, I think, Ked just mentioned about her father, I think even up to two years ago, as I don't have a university degree, even up to two years ago, my family was like, oh, so great, you're doing so well. When are you going to finish your degree? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was just like, finish my degree. In, in, do you even know what I was studying? <laughs> I didn't have no clue what I was studying. Classic. Right? <laughs> Classic. And, um, and uh, my one of my uncles, my mom brother says all the time, he's like, you're doing so well. You know, you need to go back and finish that degree. Like, he's, he's, I'm never gonna have like, I'm not gonna be on his level until I've got a degree, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is great actually. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I hope he gives, it says it till the end of time, right? So, um, I think you can just take an interest and dive deep in, and um, and meet, and access all, any of us, all of us. We're all accessible. Answer any questions you want. Um, ask any questions you want. Have them answered. Um, attend great events like this. Attend great conferences like Black Tech Fest. And are, are there any that. programs actually that you could big up quickly that are good for getting people to learn coding, UX design, and get into tech? Um, because we've got one more question that I want you all to answer. So this is sure. a quick round. Just share sure. some programs quickly. So share some, share some programs. So I guess I think we can all cover different parts. So I, I guess I will cover. So for for two fonts, the to get into investing, there's the um, Angel Investing School, which is run by um, Andy I M B, and um, we have uh, sorry well, we have and then for getting if you're a founder who a black founder especially who wants to learn about fundraising um 10 x 10 vc group that andy cage and i are part of um we host every week every friday at lunchtime we host lunchtime hangouts for founders asking fundraising questions and we also host another hangout for those who want to get into vc to ask any um vc or investor related questions about that career path um i'll leave the other resources over to to um amelie and keji Any resources you'd like to share or programs? Let's oh. go to oh, go on, go on. Miley or, or me going first. Um, okay. Resources wise, I don't know, to get into tech. So I had an operational role in tech, um, but I will say, and there, there were like I did a project management course. I don't know if that's necessarily right, but I think there's a lot of great reading out there. Um, there are a lot of great blog posts. I think the first round review, I know it's terrible that I'm plugging another VC's content, but I think first round review is fantastic because they have, um, it's like a, a mini MBA for like everything you need to know about like working in a startup. So I know Andy and Andy have touched on the founder side of things, but this is more on the operational side of things. Um, and yeah, like just, read, uh, oh, uh, okay. I will stop talking there, go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> From my side, uh, definitely check out Code First Girls for the young women. So 18 to 26-ish, if you're looking for free coding courses, come and join. They're really, really fantastic. Um, for younger people, Apps for Good, Code Club, and STEMETS, which is run by, and again, again another amazing uh, Black founder, Amri Maffedon, who's also an MBE. Um, and, uh, and then I think thinking about other places as well. So I'm also sitting on the board of um, uh, Ada College, uh, which is a specialist digital college. They do fantastic apprenticeships Apprenticeships, digital apprenticeships in data science and in, in software development. You don't have to have a IT background to join and they take mature candidates as well. And they have some fantastic links with industry. So these are block releases for companies like Google, for, uh, for um, Deloitte, for you know, lots of other really, really fantastic companies. So check out the apprenticeships. They're a really way, good way to, to get in tech as well. Yeah, and there's currently a program that's in collaboration with YSOS with Create Jobs that trains people on digital skills, gives them a Mac to use, and then actually gives them an internship um, for their first gig in, in, in the technology sector. So I know that I have less than one minute to go, and I'm not really good at rounding up, but um, I hope everyone got a lot of value from this conversation. I think, um, if anything, the really key thing to take away is that tech is for all of us, and we all belong in that space. And there's a community of people that you can turn to to really help you along that journey and to nurture you across that career journey so you're not in this space alone. So if you've ever felt like that, you're not. And if you're looking to break into this space, there's exciting opportunities waiting for you on the other side that would encourage you to do so. So on that note, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of our panelists. 
to Andy and Marley to Keji. You can't hear, but everyone's clapping in the background. So oh, thanks to Marley, thanks Keji. Thank thanks, you Andy. all for joining us today. Um, and have a great, great rest of the festival, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy the festival. Thank you. Bye. Bye.